and he joins us this morning on the Harbor One Hotline mm. from from one of your favorite cities, Wiggy, the home of the Lemon Pepper oh. Wings. And, uh, he is he is in Hotlanta this morning. Hey, town, stand uh, up. What's I, I thought Magic City was a like a kid where you could rent place you could rent a moon bounce for a, a kid's party. No, uh, no. yeah, you might be able to rent something there. The moon bounce, <laughs> not for sure. It's for kids though. <laughs> Hey, 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 Greg, can you get everybody at TD Garden tonight chanting McFarland all at the same time? Can you do that for I, I, me? I, I could try that. I, I mean, I, when when would you like that to happen? Would that be first, uh, well, first quarter? Or? Right after Wick Grouse McScold you for listening to the Red Sox game, <laughs> why sitting courtside? So there you go. <laughs> yeah, can you keep me up to date tonight on what's it? Just send me a text every inning. Let me know what's going on. <laughs> Of course, it's of course. That's my isn't that that's in my job description is broadcast for the Red Sox. Absolutely. Uh, listen, this team, the Red Sox team, has twenty one wins and uh, still find themselves eight back of the uh, mm. of the division leading Rays. Is there uh, will that team ever be caught the this season in your mind? Uh, the Rays probably not the, the way they're going. But but here's the good thing. Here's the good thing. As Justin Turner pointed out. He said he, he went to Game 7 of the Bruins. Sorry, everybody, for bringing that up again. But he went to – and he, he looked at Patrice Bergeron. He said, I know that feeling. I recognize that feeling because I was on a Dodgers team a year ago that won 111 games, 111 games, and then the playoffs come and boom, exactly the same fate happened. So he said, don't be wishing too much for what the Rays are going for. There's something to be said for taking the hard road. So there okay. you go. I'm All an right. optimist. All right. Brad Foe, uh, we, when we talk about Chris Sale, always go back to his injuries and the issues that he's had, and it almost always goes back to the Tommy John surgery. When you see a guy like Bryce Harper come back in a way that he has from that surgery, is that just a case of modern medicine, or is it a case of we can stop blaming injuries for the downfall of Chris Sale? No, I don't think I think the Chris Sale thing was probably the norm for most pitchers. I think that, that when you have an aberration like Bryce Harper, you're sitting there sitting there saying, Why hasn't anyone ever done this before? And a big part of it is he's a position player. I mean so there's no question about it. If he was a pitcher right now, he wouldn't come close to be coming back. But at the same time, it's the Bryce Harper thing's crazy. It's crazy. It, it's it's not. We can compare him to Chris Sale. We can compare him to Trevor Story. We can compare him to whoever. But we're comparing to everybody in the history of uh, who has had Tommy John surgery, and no one has come close to this guy in terms of coming back. And and I got to be honest with you, like watching him, I'm like, oh, he's going to be striking out all the time. He's going to look rough. He looked all right to me the other uh, last couple nights. So uh, I just think that again, this guy's sort of just an aberration. Bradford, when you look at the rotation, is it seem like Tanner Hawk is kind of taking the bull by the horns as if you want to call him the ace, but is the guy that it looks like they're going to lean on him if he continues to pitch the way he's pitching? I'll tell you what. You know, I think Sam Kennedy was probably on to something in terms of what he told you guys. Right now, if off of what I've seen, the guy who is the ace, is and maybe this changes in a couple of days, but it's Chris Sale. I mean, Chris Sale is the guy who the the image that he portrayed the last night, the last couple times. That's the guy that you say that's the stuff that is is ace worthy. Tanner Houck's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tanner Houck is is doing a good job, and I think deserves to stay in the rotation. Um, and and it's going to be interesting to see what they do with James Paxton coming back, what they do with Tanner Houck. For the time being, he's going to stay in the rotation. But we said this before. they got to start finding like the guy, the guy. And Chris Sale was far from the guy early in the season. But if you're going to uh, spin the wheel of ace, ace candidates right now, I'm going to land on Chris Sale. During the win streak, there were names coming out, making headlines that I don't think a lot of people expected. And I asked Brian O'Halloran about this, but I want to know your point. Uh, do you think that maybe Heim Bloom knew what he was doing a little bit more than we gave him credit for because the names that are that are making headlines that are emerging as stars are guys that are here because of Heim Bloom. Yeah, I think that as much as as much as we rip time, you know, I think that the fact is we have to take a breath and as we sit here say, "Hey, good job." I mean, the the reason why they're having success right now 
is because a lot of these pieces, which we didn't think would ever fit on this team, are fitting and are good. Connor Wong is a much better player than I ever thought he would be. This kid, Emmanuel Valdez, who they got in the Christian Vasquez trade, who's playing second base, is a legit major leaguer. It, it, you go down the list. And Verdugo, Verdugo actually might make the all-star team this year. So, yeah, I mean, I think that it, it's, it's, it's a roller coaster anytime you're a GM, and we've seen it with Dave Dombrowski. Dave Dombrowski was the best ever, and now look at what the Phillies are. But So, at, Courtney, as we sit here right now, Bloom deserves a lot of credit. He does. I mean, there's no way around it. You have a team that has a good record, that's coming off an eight-game win streak, um, that is overachieving, that seems to be figuring itself out and being able to compete with the best teams in the American League, you got to give him credit. Bradford, when you another player that you know you got to give some credit to is Yoshida. And when you look at what he's been able to do, um, what 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 kind of was your expectations for him, or like, or what's your expectations kind of as what you've been able to see out of him uh, as a player? Well, first of all, there's been a lot of surprise with him, including the whitest teeth I've ever seen on a major league baseball player. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this is like I have to figure this out. This, so this is uh, and and uh, it was also cool the other day. You know, when you see a major leaguer sort of fawning over another major leaguer when he went over to Bryce Harper and that's his hero and he gets the cleats and I mean that's that's a cool thing because sometimes they they play it off like oh, it's no big deal. It was a huge deal. So, but to go back to your question, early in the year when this guy's grounding out all the time, I'm like, oh, man, you know, everyone made too much of him at the WBC. Everyone made him into a superstar when he shouldn't really have been classified that way. And I don't know if he's a superstar, but I give him a lot of credit for making adjustments and give the hitting coach, Peter Patsy, for making the adjustments. Like, this guy has become a legit good good player the type of guy which you desperately needed on this team it could have gone either way but the guy that i'm seeing right now i think everyone would agree is going to be a good player probably for the life of this contract oh wow now we got a new guy we got goalie bob now we got <laughs> pete batsy <laughs> yeah oh they guess that's, listen hitting hitting fatsy let's go i mean yeah right. I mean, listen, right. listen, you you know this right you know this you know this, Wiggy. Your tight ends coach. When the tight ends suck, the tight ends coach sucks, right? Right. When the tight ends are good. The tight end coach is awesome. I love the hitting you know coach's name, though, Batsy. No, I think <laughs> I, I think coach is going to put the blame squarely on himself <laughs> if if the boxers if the boxers don't live up to the expectation, right, coach? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, oh. I'm like Belichick. <laughs> I'm like Missoula. I'll put the blame clearly on uh, myself. <laughs> Hey, listen, once I drop the game plan, it's out of my control. Right, right, Wiggy? That's it. Learn, right. those, learn those words. <laughs> yeah. What's on tap today in Atlanta? Any big plans? Oh, uh, well, like- well, we have a good run going on the broadcast. So I don't know if you saw it the other night. But, the, but speaking of meeting heroes, I got the Philly Fanatic to come up to the booth mm-hmm. and, and do a half inning with Will Fleming, which he <laughs> wanted him to stay. He desperately wanted him more than me. Mm-hmm. Um so we're going to try to figure out who the mascot is for the Braves and uh, have them at least do a half inning, maybe maybe more. Give me a break. So I have an idea, go. Rob. Um, yes. Don't they have the flash at Atlanta Braves home games? Oh, yes. What a great idea. Have him pop up and then you guys race like Wiggy and Reamer did years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you'll be looking for Blooper, who is the official mascot of the Atlanta uh, Braves. Blooper. Okay. Blooper. Yeah. Blooper. Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah, so you can, you can count. Everyone should be Greg. Go out to the, the concourse in in about the sixth inning and just listen in to when, okay. when Blooper comes to the uh, to the booth. Well, we know you're a traditionalist, so you right. probably don't like mascots. I mean, I know you can't stand the, uh, <laughs> the you can't stand the flashing lights at Fenway Park. I, I, I never said that. I said yes, I, you I did. Like, I, no, you I did, like, Bradford. I, I like. I like a I like a good mascot with well timed lighting. Let's put that on the bumper stickers. <laughs> Take Joey C to our uh, Magic City. That'll be cool. <laughs> or Boogaloo Lounge. It's a nice little. They got swings in there. You want to take them there? If swings. you go to Magic City, That's... Rob, prepare for a junk grab. They yeah, they get very swings intense. at the bar. What do you mean they have swings? Like you sit in these swings at the bar. Instead cool. of seats, they yeah. yeah. Boogaloo Lounge. Take them. 
So when they, when they when they when he walks in and said, "Hey, Joey, see the big cheese. Welcome back." I'd yeah. be a little worried. <laughs> Is it like right. a single, like a single swing? Yeah, like, like a for one swing. person. Yeah, yeah. And you could sit on it. You'd sit right at the bar, oh. Boogaloo Lounge. Right. Atlanta's ballpark's got that night. They're in that nice little area there. It's got that cool little stuff around it. So Bradford should find right. something to get into. <laughs> Where the moon bounces, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> all, right, all right, Bradfo, go Sox, and we will talk all to you right. next week. Hey, Greg, have fun tonight. All right, all have, right, have a good time. I right, listen. Right. I've been I've been called the Jinx, but I've been I've been there for wins. I've been there for losses, so I'm not worried about it at all. It's not on. Uh, it's not on me. It was. It's, I have faith in you. I have on, faith in it's you. It's on the players. It's on Joe Mazzula. It's not it has nothing to do with me being there. Nothing at all. Uh, all right, <laughs> Rob Bradford. Right. We, will, we will talk to you again next week.